Folks, don't miss the Fisherman's Fishing Show and Seminar Thursday, September 22nd at the Long Island Hilton Hotel and Convention Center starts at 6 p.m. Hey, the first 200 people receive a goodie bag with everything you see here. And if you're one of the early bird arrivers, the first 100 are going to get a Super Strike custom lure made specially for this show. Now, the next 200 receive everything you see here in a goodie bag. The next 100 receive everything you see here. And with over 100 vendors, some seminars from the greatest authorities in fishing, like Dave Marciano and the Fisherman's Gray's Fish Tag Research Seminar, you're going to have an excellent night here and at 9 o'clock, the largest raffle that we've ever done. Don't miss it, folks. Thursday, September 22nd, the Huntington Hilton. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, September 22nd, and tonight is the big fishing show at the Huntington Hilton. Special guest Dave Marciano from Wicked Tuna will be at the show. You don't want to miss this event. We'll also have Captain John Paduano with Light Tackle Specialist, Crazy Alberto Talking Surf, Scientist Chris Paparo, Shark Expert, Captain John Raguso on Fishing Offshore, and I will be talking about the surf as well. And for you fly anglers out there, we have Mark Sadati. We'll also be holding a live panel discussion on the Striped Bass Tagging Program hosted by New Jersey Delaware Managing, Managing Editor Jim Hutchinson. Many of our correspondents will be there as well. The first 500 through the door will get a goodie bag worth more than the $20 admission. And on top of that, there'll be a mega raffle with amazing prizes. Get all the details by clicking on the card above. Hope to see you all there. We are the Fish Bites Nation, and this is your invitation. So grab some fish bites and get busy casting, because you can't join the nation without doing the catching. The 2022 Fred Galafaro Memorial Montour Classic is fast approaching. The tournament starts noon on Friday, September 30th and ends noon Sunday, October 2nd. Sponsored by Long Island State Parks and the Fishermen. Cash and tackle prizes for the three largest striped bass will be awarded. Bluefish and released striped bass as well. Entry fee is $20 and the awards ceremony starts at Montauk State Park at 12.30 p.m. on Sunday, October 2nd. For more info, call 631-321-3510. I'm Captain Greg DeBrule of the party boat Blackhawk out of Niantic, Connecticut. You've seen us at the sports shows, you've seen us on TV, magazines, newspapers. Now you can come fish with us, okay? We're fast, we're clean, and we're comfortable. And besides that, we catch them, ask around. Come visit us at BlackhawkSportFishing.com. We'll save a seat for you. On September 22nd, I'll be guest bartending at the Bodie's Beach Bar at 1 Corey Avenue in Blue Point from 5 to close. Come on down, say hi, and grab a drink and find out the details on their fish upcoming fishing events. Also, anybody who mentions this video at the bar on Tuesday will be entered in my personal drawing for a Fish Bites bundle. I also want to remind everybody that the weekly video fishing forecast is now on iTunes as well as Google Podcasts. Search for the Fishman Magazine Podcast and subscribe. Now let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. To the west, fluke action was pretty good overall, but the bodies of fish are moving out of the bay and into deeper water. On the outside, check out the Hempstead Reef where fish to 5 pounds were found. Bay fluking was still good at the Wantaw and Meadowbrook bridges. Weak fish to 28 inches were a nice bycatch at the bridges also. The open bay waters have weak fish to 24 inches too. Along the central south shore, fluke action is good as both bays are seeing fish move towards the inlets from the back bays. Weak fish are popping up all over the great south bay, especially in the p.m. period before dark. In Mauritius, fun fishing can be had at the Smith Point Bridge for bottom dwellers, sea bass, porgies, kingfish, fluke, etc. While close, closer to the inlet, larger fluke can be had. On the docks throughout the South Shore, snappers, blues, kingfish, and blowfish, and crabs remain hot. Albies have also made a solid showing at the inlets, with Shinnecock seeing the best action out of the three. On the east end, the Albie bite was ferocious again in Montauk around the point, and even off the surf by the harbor, white tackle catchers and fly fishermen were having a ball. Striper fishing is still solid at block with fish up to 40 pounds, and tuna fishing remains excellent too, but the boats had to run a little further last week to fish for them, although some tuna were spotted along the sand beach behind the town feeding on the bunker pods. Bottom fishing in Montauk for porgies and sea bass was great once again. 
Along the North Shore, tinker mackerel invaded the western bays and harbors along the Central Shore. Porgies were the best bet and heading east, the gut and race were seeing a resurgence with stripers and bluefish once again. Hey guys, it's G from Black Hole Outfitters. Just want to let everybody know we're having our end of season clearance event. Every Old Town boat we've got, we've got hundreds of them are on sale. You get the best prices of the season on new pre-paddled and demo boats. Check out blackholeoutfitters.com. Give us a call at the shop. Uh, you're going to get the best price on an Old Town that you'll ever get all year long. Check us out. News 12 meteorologist Rich Van Owen had good action with the fluke and schoolie bass this week to the west. Well, now let's see if Hurricane Fiona will be an issue this week at all. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You know, we should check your favorite apps, websites, weather tools, whatever you got. This is a general heads up, general overview on the upcoming weekend. First weekend of autumn across uh, the island, the tri state, and looks like water temps still holding in the 70s, been fairly warm lately. Wave height Saturday, uh, you know, going to be a little bit rough uh, beyond 5 to 10 miles. 4 to 8, a good chop there, healthy chop with the northwest breeze, gusty. The 2 to 4 start to extend back to the ocean as we go throughout Saturday afternoon, Saturday night as the winds begin to subside. So, nice little window Sunday morning between about 5, 6 a.m. and 2 in the afternoon. So, the pick of the weekend if you want to get in the ocean Looks like Sunday this time. And again, things start to kind of uh, chop up again towards Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening. Uh, again, northwest breeze, about 15 to 20. Going to be a little gusty on Saturday. Starts to subside late Saturday afternoon a little bit. Still a little chop out there. You know, overnight Saturday, Sunday, there's your little window there with a the west-southwest about 5 to 15, a little bit better there. And then we start to get, uh, you know, a little choppy again. Southwest breeze, 15 to 25 going into Sunday evening. There's a high tides, new moon now. North shore for late morning, south shore figure about 6, 7 a.m. Temperatures 60s to near 70, kind of a cool Saturday. A little warmer on Sunday figure about the, uh, the mid-70s. Check that guru right here, see what's going on, a little different look. As your Saturday, you know, hard northwest breeze, you know, pretty gusty winds here right through about mid-afternoon. But there's the nice window on Sunday as we uh, see more of a west-southwest. It's not perfect, but at least, you know, down below 20 knots in most spots, waves come down too, so it looks a little bit better right there. But uh, again, pick of the weekend, probably Sunday for the ocean. Overall, though, not too bad for the first weekend of autumn. Catch him up. Enjoy. Matt, back to you. It's time for our correspondents to check in. Let's start off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody from Montauk. Unfortunately, this weekend's not looking too pretty for uh, getting out fishing. Between the hurricane swell and we're going to have some serious northwest wind, it might be a good weekend to get yourself ready and do some work on your gear because the fall is looking incredible. Uh, the false albacore fishing out here in Montauk's really taken off. Uh, I would actually use the word on fire. We're also having some nice schools of slot-sized bass boiling on the surface at certain times of the tide. That's a good sign. Um, fluke sea bass still finishing strong. Everybody's doing well. Walking the docks, I'm seeing guys with codfish, um, other stuff from offshore. Uh, giants closed on Monday. We had a couple nice guys bringing some decent-sized giants, seven, 800-pounders. So I got a picture of Brian Fromm with a nice fish that he caught on the last day. Um, one quick note, um, I'd just like to give a shout out to Captain Dave Marmino of the Viking Fleet. Uh, Dave had a customer on the Porgy boat that had a major medical incident and was literally dead on the deck. And Dave came down from the wheelhouse, gave him CPR and brought the guy back to life. And he was airlifted from the Coast Guard and brought to a hospital in Rhode Island where he is, in, as far as I know, in good shape. Um, he's... A volunteer firefighter EMS out here in Montauk. A lot of these guys all around Long Island. You've got a lot of EMS, firefighters, police. So keep that in mind. The guys that you're fishing with, they do a lot for their communities. And this is a perfect example of when they step up. Um, again, my um, Sage demo, Rod Demo Day, Columbus weekend, Sunday, October 9th. Um, great raffle prizes. Some pliers from Van Stahl, Grundens. Uh, sage rod, fish pond, beer, barbecue, you name it, it's going to be a good day. So come on out. That's 2 to 7 on Sunday, October 9th. All right, everybody, catch them up. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, Matt. Hey, everyone. Fishing's definitely picking up. We're seeing a decent amount of small bass, a couple of big ones, too. Uh, <laughs> the one that I saw blew up on my popper yesterday at sunset. I saw the tail with by no means a schoolie. Um, a couple other friends have 
you know, that have been fishing at night. It, it does get a little frustrating with the amount of bait around and hearing these fish, um, you know, kind of slapping around to, to get into them, but they, they are there. So it's definitely worth putting the time in. Fluke bite in uh, Shinnecock, yesterday Shinnecock Star had a really nice trip. A lot, a lot of keepers uh, seemed to be kind of, you know, it was west of the bridge uh, to buoy nine by Tiana Beach Pavilion. And, uh, you know, the typical high-low with the bucktails and either fish bites or um, or gulp was, was working best on that. The albies, even though they came on pretty strong a few weeks ago, seem to have kind of faded off. It's just the frustration of chasing them. But a buddy of mine, Anthony Cerrone, has gotten into a few over, putting his time in at Shinnecock East and also some blues. A lot of blues and shad in the surf. I've heard of a couple of bass mixed in. As well, and obviously those those cocktail blues and shad are going to attract the uh, stripers. So, be interesting to see what happens after you know we get through this weather and wind this weekend. Uh, hopefully, we're going to be in for for a really good bite, and uh, hopefully, I'll get to see a, a lot of a lot of people tonight at the show at the Huntington Hilton. Um, lots of raffles, giveaways, goodie bags, Super Strike specials, really cool pattern this year on uh, the show specials. So hopefully that's gonna be in my bag for this fall run. A lot of really good seminars. Captain Marciano from Wicked Tuna talking about the Grease Fish Tag program. Uh, Matt's doing a, a surf seminar. Alberto's gonna be there. So um, just really cool now. They're kind of like over the COVID hump to be able to get back in person, kind of see everyone and uh, swap some stories and get fully amped for the full full fall run ahead. So see you tonight and uh, good luck this weekend. Hopefully you can get some fishing in. Back to you, Matt. Let's take a quick break and get the latest from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash. And now for the current Dreamboat standings. We start off with confirmation of our August Fish of the Month winner, which is awarded to the largest sea bass entered in August. It goes to John Woodruff of Kenalone, New Jersey, with a 4.44 pound entry. Congratulations, John, as he wins a Tsunami Evict Reel and a Dexter Outdoors Dual Edge 8-inch Flexible Filet Knife. The current leaderboard stays the same. Rob Carrizano is in first, Dean Paella is in second, Sam Dibner third, Garrett Weir in fourth. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steiger Craft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson. I just want to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash this week. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a ball game. Bob Wagner came roaring in with two entries this week, whittling Justin Oster's tournament leading score from 12 down to nine. Here's how it went down. Bob Wagner first entered a 26 inch Albi, which got him in third place for the hardtail category. We also had two other entries, one from Mike Radzizewski at 26.25, and then the category leading fish by Tom Hode at 26 and a half inches. Next, Bob Wagner came back at us again with a 28 and 3 quarter inch weak fish, which is good enough for second place in the category. At the moment, we have Justin Oser still leading with 9 points, Bob Wagner right behind him with 8 points, and Tom Hode taking down third place with 6 points. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cal Harbor Bait and Tackle. Hey guys, it's Phil from Cal Harbor here with this week's report. We're out here for some fall run action, looking for blitz and stripers, blues, albies, whatever ends up coming up. We already got a couple blue fish uh, in the team size in the uh, back bays blitzing on peanut bunker. And uh, we're out here with Captain Dave, hopefully looking for some albies. Um, Dave, what's the most important thing when you're looking for albies? You're looking for albies in an area that you might not have found them in already, or you're just kind of your first day out. One thing to look for is always Look for birds. Anywhere you see birds floating around, looking around. Birds are always really important. Birds are always good. They're yeah, doing absolutely. the same thing we're doing. They're looking for the fish. So. Absolutely. So let's see what happens, guys.
Light Tackle with Captain Dave. This has been such a successful trip. Unbelievable. We had a, a huge number of uh, false albacore. And uh, here's an example of another one coming up. You really want to get out there. This is that time. We've been doing fantastic with the jigs. And as always, it's great to spend another week with everybody on these reports. Check out this gorgeous fish that's about to be released safely uh, sent away. We all bid you peace. Tight line. From the Far Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, Captain Al here, Fire Island Report uh, for this week, September 23rd, 4th, 5th. It looks like going to be a tough time offshore. Hurricane out there, so I think it's going to be mostly inshore fishing, which is okay because the fishing has been excellent. Uh, I'm catching a limit of weak fish every day, and I have had fish up to eight pounds. A lot of fives and sixes mixed in, and some big blue fish on plugs. And the fluke fishing is just fair to moderate, but there are still fish to be caught. And remember, that season goes on until October 9th. So uh, there are things to do. Bottom fishing is excellent as well. Loads of blowfish around. Uh, trigger fish if you get on some pieces. So I think it bodes well uh, for fishing inside this weekend, Matt. And uh, that's it. If you want the full report, go to skimmeroutdoors.com for my full weekly report. But, uh, that's it. Talk to you next week, Matt. With our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, it's been another exciting week here at River Bay Outfitters. We did a lot of guiding. I was out on Friday. I took a young couple out. Um, they did very well. I've never touched a fly rod. Uh, we were at the Connect working. You really had to work at it because a couple of weeks ago, uh, there was extremely low water, extremely high temperatures, all the weeds just died. So all those places where the fish used to hide in the middle of the stream were gone. But, so look for under hanging bushes. That's where they're gonna be. But water you think is too shallow for them? Believe me, it's not too shallow for them. There are a lot of fish. Sunday, I took, we took out another group, uh, four anglers, myself and Mark Wayne, another guide of mine. Uh, and uh, we did have a fabulous time. Everybody caught fish. Everybody had a great time. Uh, never fly fish before, they get excited. Here's the thing, at this time of year, there's not a lot of insect like caddis, a few, a few mayflies, but mostly it's terrestrials. And the fly, and big, and big. Don't be afraid to go. I don't know if you can see this, but this is a Madame X. Very simple fly. Uh, it, it looks like either like a grasshopper or a stonefly. I don't know what the trout thing is. All it always it looks like big meat to them. And so they they really charged after them. We had we had a, quite a few on these and ants. Uh, as far as saltwater goes, I'm still hearing bluefish dominating the scene. But there are some weak fish being caught now, and some bass are being caught later in the evening, two one two in the morning. But they're coming in. This water is still pretty warm. As, as far as going into the back base, well, my good friend Kenny, Roy, and Mike, they actually went out bottom bouncing, not fly fishing, and uh, they had a mixed bag. Blowfish, sea bass, uh, porgies, keeper fluke. Uh, they had a great time. Uh, and there's a lot of action out there. Last, last Saturday, it was funny, was we did a, a, the DEC. Thank you to Heidi and her crew, Walter and Francis, and also Sue at the park. They put on a women's only, and it was a phenomenal time. Phenomenal time. Got a lot of women interested in fly fishing. So there is a lot to be had right here on Long Island. Get out while you can because it is going to be winter soon enough. And it is just absolutely gorgeous right now. So get out there where you can. Tie lines, everybody. Let's check in with Chris Ludwig. Chris. Hey, thanks, Matt. What's going on, guys? So this last week or so, I've been chasing around the striped bass and the bluefish in my local backwater area. These fish have been on hordes of small peanut bunker and some adult bunker mixed in. But the, the bait in the bay is incredible. I mean, you could walk across it. Moving forward, these fish are hitting them from all different angles, and I'm capitalizing by copying those peanuts. I'm using something called the rainfish for the striped bass. It basically looks exactly that, like a peanut bunker. 
As far as the bluefish, I've been using bigger paddle tails. They seem to be following around the larger adult bunker from what I found. I was on a pod the other day and out of nowhere, bluefish came from all directions and started attacking it. It was a complete blitz. It was wonderful to see. And we uh, got on them with the no live bait needed paddle tails. So basically, the whole theme of this conversation is following the bunker and finding the fish that are eating them. That's really what's going on. But as far as the surf goes, there's still incredible life out there. All of our predators are there. I've seen small mackerels in the surf. We've seen a couple albies, you know, visually busting on bait, as well as the ever-present rays and the fluke. So the surf has much life to it. it, makes me very happy, and I really hope you all get out there and throw some tins, some paddle tails, some jigs, what have you, but have some fun. Back to you, Matt. From Jamaica Bay, Chris Landry checks in. Chris. Thanks, Matt. Inside Jamaica Bay, it's all about the weak fish bite right now. Uh, and it's going to get even better over the next coming weeks. There's also still massive bluefish blitzes and the bluefish are getting bigger. There are gator blues in the mix. Uh, I got two bluefish on one plug today. They are biting so aggressively. It was insane. Um, the water temperatures in the bay are about 73, 74 once it gets below 70, we can expect that fall run to begin, hopefully uh, in a couple weeks in October. Uh, outside of the bay, about 30 miles out, is a hot yellowfin bite and a hot mahi bite. So if you can reach that, go for it. Other than that, waiting on this fall run. Thank you and back to you, Matt. Let's check in with Max Finch from the Connecticut side of the Western Sound. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World. This is the uh, name of this week. The Albies have showed up in full force in our local area. Uh, they're inshore. The hottest bite right now is uh, in the middle of the sound. So, you know, just dead center, I would say hot spots are all, like off of uh, Kakini Shoals, off of Sherwood Island off of Penfield, and then, you know, guys shooting across, there's been fish at cranes. We actually have seen them everywhere we've gone this, you know, today. Uh, the local fluke bite is so-so. I actually went fluking with Rick, the uh, shop owner, yesterday after my birthday. We had, like, a little over a dozen fish with three keepers in the mix, so that was cool. Places like 26, can 24, and then, uh, you know, like 28C drift in the humps. The Shroy Bass Bite has definitely been good this week too with all the small bait around. They're uh, inshore around the islands and then in our deeper water reefs, Diamond Jig. And the Diamond Jig Bite at 11B seemed to calm down a lot. But uh, if you definitely get inshore, the, our harbors and estuaries are loaded with peanuts and the bass and blues may keen in on them. Uh, the Black Sea Bass Bite is definitely still good out in the deeper wrecks. We won't see those fish really start moving shallow until uh, you know around the Blackfish Open or a little after that. And then porgies, they're still, the porgy bite is still good. Uh, these fish will start moving, you know, deeper water when uh, the water temps start to cool down. But right now, guys are still catching them from the beaches, places like Sherwood Island. And then past up here. Other than that, everybody's got the algae fever. Me and Lauren have been out here all day. We've been catching them. You know, throwing stuff like algae snacks seems to be the hot ticket right now. And then, uh, like, epoxy jigs are always popular. All right, everyone. Thanks and good luck. Captain Mike Sentry has the latest from Staten Island. Thanks, Tim and Matt. Hope all is well, guys. Hey, guys. Mike MG Sentry here from Angles of Legend Sport Fishing Boat Works. Well, on the tuna grounds, not that much action has been going on. So all I can say about that is stay tuned. October's right around the corner. The commercial season is closed until October 2nd. Uh, what else? What else? Snapper Blues. Definitely plentiful in the Robertson Bay. The Flute Grounds. Down by the train bridge, early mornings and late evenings on peanut bunker, three-way rigging. You can even use an egg sinker. Guys were catching some really nice ones, eight and nine pounders. Very impressive fish. And uh, what else? Offshore, mm, I know a couple guys did very well, well out there. I'm talking 150 miles out. Uh, one of the uh, big chartered guys named Mark de Blasio, I believe he got 18 uh, big eyes on one overnight. So I was pretty impressive with tiles and mahi and all that other stuff. Ah, what else? Striped bass, crunch sport fish, my friend Guy. Got a nice one today, about 30 pounds. I believe he caught several, but here's a picture of one. So striped bass run, October 15th is, is when you pretty much go out there and start targeting these bigger fish. And to that, well, stay tuned, uh, be safe, and uh, let's get out there and make it happen. Back to you, Matt. Thus, we check in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pesvela down in Costa Rica. 
Hello guys and welcome to Costa Rica to the Marina Pez Vela. We got some epic news this week guys. A 271 pounds yellowfin tuna landed here the other day at Marina Pez Vela. What an epic fish. Three hour fight by the anglers. Just amazing stuff and huge congrats to my buddies Marvin and Wan aboard Monkey Shine who were the crew on that one. Awesome job guys. Tuna bite has been wide open these last few weeks. Some really, really good fish getting caught. There's been a, a good sailfish bite going on the last week as well. If you're down here now, get out and experience that sailfish bite. Blue marlin are solid and the mahi mahi have been coming in. Been a good bite about between eight and 12 miles the last few days. Some nice size mahi in the 15 to 20 pound range. Would love to see you guys down here in Costa Rica. Please come and check us out. Back over to you guys. The digital edition is available online now. New England editor Dave Anderson has some great tips on targeting albies. George Jen has a great read on jigging stripers. And don't forget about the underappreciated carp. Tom P. gives this species some respect. Remember, $29.95 gets you 12 glossy print issues and all the weekly digital content, plus full access to the website, too. And best of all, you can compete in our Dreamboat Contest and Coastal Kayak Clash. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. Come down tonight to the Huntington Hilton and say hello at the best show in town. If I don't see you tonight, I will see you right here next week at thefisherman.com.